Uh, so my name is uh, Jason Schillerstrom. I'm an assistant professor of psychiatry at the University of Texas Health Science Center uh, in San Antonio, uh, one of the docs at the med school here in town. And today we are going to talk about behavioral disturbances in elders with dementia. And then we'll also talk about uh, uh, caregiver burden uh, related issues as well. And so to begin with, for behavioral disturbances elders with dementia, I think it's important to review uh, what dementia is. And so to have uh, dementia, you have to have memory impairment. And then you have to have um, another uh, cognitive, another cognitive loss. And the, the, the cognitions that are specific to um, dementia are aphasia, which is a speech impairment, agnosia, which is a sensory impairment, apraxia, which is a uh, motor impairment, and then executive function impairment. Function impairment. And so when we think about behavioral disturbances with Alzheimer's disease, a lot of times we're thinking about, or Alzheimer's disease or other dementias, a lot of times we're thinking about things like um, agitation and irritability, hitting, striking out, um, these types of problems. Or we're thinking um, about apathy, they're not willing to do anything, it's, they need constant prompting, and these types of problems. And so when you look at what, you know, what is it that gets people um, you know, what is it that leads to institutionalization? In general, there's two reasons why people are placed in nursing home settings. Um, and then if we go back to our diagnosis of um, dementia, functional loss is another criteria. And so the reason, in general, the reason, oh, these going to fit, yeah. And so in general, the reason why people are placed in nursing home settings is either because of behavioral challenges or because of functional loss. And so it's, I don't know if I've ever met anybody, any family member, who placed their loved one in a nursing home because of memory impairment. So memory impairments are generally very tolerable. Um, you might have to remind them, you might have to uh, give them prompts and cues, but in general, memory impairments are um, not too distressing to caregivers. The reason why people um, eventually have to place their loved ones in long-term care facilities tends to be because of either functional loss or because of behavioral disturbances. And so functional loss kind of makes sense. If a person, you know, if it's an older couple living at home, and, a, and one of them has dementia, and the, uh, or, or even doesn't have dementia, and the other spouse can't just, can't physically help them with bathing and grooming, or they can't physically help them with <clears throat> toileting or feeding. If one of the, if, if, if one of them is functionally dependent, if they can't meet their functional needs and then whoever they're living with can't provide those functional needs, then they need to go to a place that can meet those needs. And so that would be nursing home or assisted living settings depending on the amount of care that they need. And so people get institutionalized because of functional loss or they might be able to um, bathe themselves, groom themselves, kind of meet the basics but they have these behavioral problems. And so behavioral problems might be, again, things like striking out, um, anger, agitation, uh, wandering behaviors would be another good example. Hypersexuality um, comes up quite often. 
um, sleep disturbances, these sorts of behaviors, and, and, and that's, that's why people go to nursing homes. It's not, it's not because of memory loss, or rarely is it because of, just because of memory loss. And so if we look at our, our criteria for, um, for dementia, again, memory impairment, as far as uh, uh, transitioning to long-term settings goes, memory impairment, uh, while it's certainly important for the uh, diagnosis, it's less, important, it's less of a factor for institutionalization. Speech impairments, sensory impairments, and motor impairments, again, are less important. Executive function impairment is the big one. And so executive function impairment is what leads to an inability to care for yourself, as well as these classic behavioral disturbances. And so we can talk about, you know, what is executive function impairment? And so we're really talking about it. So executive impairment. So what is executive function and what is executive impairment? So executive function is a frontal lobe cognition. And so if I was going to draw a brain, I have to, again, I hope no neurologists are watching me draw brains. But if I was going to draw a brain, this would be the brain, this would be the front. <laughs> And this is the back. <laughs> and so, um, so memory, memory is on the sides. It's in the hippocampus. Encoding the structure that encodes memories is on the sides. It's in the temporal lobe. It's the hippocampus. But executive impairment is frontal lobe. It's all right here. So frontal lobe is executive function. And so executive function is your ability to plan, organize, sequence, monitor, and inhibit complex goal-directed behaviors. And so for my students, the way I'll describe it is it's that set of cognitions that allows you to behave independently from your environment as opposed to having your environment dictate your, uh, your behaviors. And so we can think of you know, different examples of um, executive function impairment. And so right now it's the heat of the summer, but soon the holidays are coming up. And my clinic always gets lots of new consults uh, right after the holidays. And so what will happen is it will be, you know, the holiday season and families will be invited over and, you know, the, um, you know perhaps the older mother volunteers to make uh, the green bean casserole. And so the green bean casserole, if it's the same green bean casserole that this older person has made, um, for their whole lives and if they're in their own kitchen and they have their own utensils and their own stove, their own pots and pans, there's no interruptions, then this will in fact be um, the best green bean casserole ever and just like it has been for all the subsequent years. However, what happens around the holidays is uh, it never goes like that. So around the holidays, um, uh, people are invited to their daughters or their sons' homes and now they have to make the green bean casserole with this new oven and they just can't figure out the buttons or they'll be making the casserole and they get called away for a phone call and they come back and they're trying to figure out you know well did I put the cream of mushroom soup in or you know where was I and and it's not that they've forgotten how to cook they haven't forgotten the recipe it's not a memory problem it's that they, they can't reorganize themselves. And your ability to reorganize yourself, your ability to problem solve through the distractions, that is what executive function is. And so executive function, as it turns out, is what predicts your ability to take care of yourself. And when people become executively impaired, then that's what also seems to lead to the behavioral disturbances that we commonly see in, in people with dementia. And so we can talk about, you know, what are the behavioral disturbances that we see in people with dementia? And, and there's a lot of them. Um, there is, um, so for example, hallucinations. People will have hallucinations. Um, dilute, and so hallucinations are where you, you see things that aren't there or you hear things that aren't there. That's what a hallucination is. People will have delusions. And so with delusions, this is where you, you 